So I'm back at school now, and that means that everything that comes with living at school for me comes back. That includes all the stress in maintaining your social aspects, all the social stress, all the keeping up with your work stress, and it can be a lot. I feel like a lot of people endure a lot of stress. And stress is a good thing. It motivates you to do stuff. If you didn't have that, you would just sit around and not do anything all day. Just playing Xbox or whatever. You wouldn't get anything done because the stress is saying, Oh my gosh, you gotta do this now! And if you don't have that, if you don't have that push to do it now, you're never gonna get anything accomplished. But I think a lot of times people take it too strong. Like you have to be the best. Now I've never been in too competitive of a spot like where you can be either a clear winner or a clear loser, but I know a lot of people are in that situation in any aspect of your life. Like, uh, I don't know, any example, like, let's say you play Survivor, the reality show, and you're on there, you're either the winner of a million dollars, or maybe you make it to the end, but you're a loser. You don't get the money. Now, obviously in a case like this, you're either the winner or the loser, the person who gets it or who doesn't get it. It's a very clear line. And I think that by that distinction, a lot of people can get depressed and have a feeling of self-worthlessness, like you're not good enough, you didn't do what you're supposed to. But the interesting thing is that's really not true when you look at society, because one man can't do everything in society. That's the idea of an economy, the idea that there are several people producing tons of new things, and several people working on distributing them, several people working on ways to make life better for us. You know, one person can't do everything, and like a hundred people, or a thousand people, or even just a million people can't do that. It requires millions upon millions of people. So even though sometimes I do feel like, oh, I'm not as good, like, I can be with someone, and whether it's doing homework, or being social, or being athletic, or being smart, I'm often not number one, but I don't have to be number one, I just have to be good enough to have any place and make any contribution at all. Because if I can make a contribution, then I'm doing my part, and I'm fitting into society, and I'm at least playing some role. Of course, the concern then is, are you doing enough to fulfill your role? And in a lot of ways, that's a subjective interpretation. Like, am I doing enough or am I not? Am I uh, fulfilling what I need to do in order to feel like I'm being worthful? Like, is the world a better place for me being here? Or am I just sucking? Am I just not adding anything? And I think that's a very big concern that some people have, especially for me, in several regards. Like, for example, with socialization. Like, if you're trying to talk to people and be friends with someone, are you doing enough to really be friends with them? Are you doing enough for them to actually care about who you are and what interactions you have with them in your life? Do you matter? Are you doing enough to matter to them? Or if it has to do with getting a job or doing well in school or doing some competition that you need to do well in, like in a sports game and you're going to win a scholarship or anything like that, even though you don't have to be number one, the important thing is that you're doing enough to get by and be useful for society. And that's something that we're concerned about a lot, but whether you make it or not, oftentimes it's just subjective, because nobody's going to tell you you suck. So that's where the mind game gets in. So I don't know. Uh, that's where you start to decide that I'm not good enough, because you don't have to be number one logically. There's seven billion people on Earth. You can't be number one. You can be number three billion five hundred sixty-nine millionth and still have a place in society. But the thing is, are you just worthless? For the people in your life, are you causing harm because they have to look after you and what they're investing into you isn't what they're getting out? Is that the situation? And I guess that's a justification that a lot of people who are self-deprecating in a lot of ways, including myself, use in order to say that they're not doing enough with their life or to have an excuse to feel down on themselves. So I guess that's the thought I've been having lately. <laughs> I guess any way to say that you need to improve, but if it's a cyclical thing, like a cycle, you're saying, oh, you're never going to be good enough. That's not uh, productive. And that's the funny thing about stress, too. A good amount of it works and helps you, but when there's too much, it just tears you down. It doesn't help you. In fact, it's damaging to you. It's about having the right amount and knowing how to control that. But once again, a big part of that is logic. So you're stressed to do something, like you're stressing out to accomplish something, like I have to do this. A big part of that is the logic, like knowing, yes, I can do this, or yes, I can talk to this person because it's not that big of a deal, or yes, I can uh, do any number of things. But the thing is, the whole anxiety thing is in your mind, and mind, for the most part, is emotions, and emotions aren't logical. So I, I think this is a situation that a lot of people deal with. Like, I've noticed that I have a couple friends on Facebook who are self-deprecating. And you can see it from their Facebook statuses. I even have one friend who changed his Facebook name to a self-deprecating title. And 
it makes you wonder whether they really want to change or not, whether they really want to become better or not, no matter what that means, better. Uh, whatever your subjective interpretation of that is. I think the issue is being able to separate your emotions from a situation. Being able to say, yes, I'm human and I have these feelings that I can't explain. And sometimes they're good, but sometimes they're bad. Being the judge of when to take your feelings out of something and just go with it is so hard because it makes you feel cold like a robot. Like you're not the human anymore. You don't have the human spirit or the soul, whatever that may mean to you. It's just such a difficult thing, and I don't know. Uh, it's really complicated, and life is very complicated. Very complicated indeed, and emotions make it even more complicated, but they make it more interesting too. Uh, so, I don't know. <laughs> I guess that's really all I can say about being number one, or being good enough, is to find the balance between emotion and push and pragmatism, if that uh, makes any sense to anybody.